everyone. My name is Ravi Prakash and welcome to next class of ratios. Okay. So here we'll discuss this kind of questions. Uh, this is a question. First question here. Okay. We are doing variety of con concepts and variety of questions and ratios, right? All those varieties which can, which you can, which you can expand the thinking horizon. Okay. It will widen your thinking, thinking ability. It will increase your IQ level, right? This kind of questions. So all the expected varieties we are doing, which can come in any aptitude examinations. Okay. So practice all these questions very, uh, very much and uh, get all the concepts right at least two, three times. Okay. These are very important concepts. See here. The cost of a precious stone is directly proportional to the square of its weight. A stone broke into three parts in the ratio by weight as 3 is to 4 is to 5. If all the parts are sold individually, the overall cost of the stone decreases by rupees 18.8 lakhs. Find the initial cost of stone. Okay, see. How you can solve this problem is the best way is the ratio of weights, right? The ratio of weights is given as the ratio of weights is given as 3 is to 4 is to 5. So if I combine all the weight together, right? So if I combined all the weight together, so all the broken parts, if I rejoin, so 3 plus 4 plus 5 rejoin to make a stone of weight 12 units, right? So the weight of a stone will be 12 units and its cost is given that cost is directly varying as the square of its weight, directly proportional to square of its weight, right? So cost is directly proportional to square of its weight. Okay. So if weight is 12, so cost becomes how much? Cost becomes 144 units. That is 12 square. Now, since all the three parts can be sold individu individually, right? That means if the weight of that part, broken part is three units, again, cost is a square, flip a square, cost is a square, uh, varying square as the weight. Okay. So if weight is three, so cost becomes nine. If weight is four or the second part, right, the cost becomes 16. That is a square of the weight. If weight is five, the cost, it, its cost becomes 25. So total cost, if all three are sold individually, the total cost becomes nine plus 16 plus 25, that is 50 units. So total cost now becomes 50 units. Earlier it was 144 units. And now if all the three parts are broken, uh, are sold, uh, individually all the three broken parts are sold individually the total what is the total sum 50 units right so now cost has decreased by 94 units so cost has decreased by 94 units and that decrease of 94 units is equal to how much is equal to rupees 18.6 lakhs according to question 18.6 lakhs according to question sorry 18.8 lakhs 18.8 lakhs according to question right so you can see here 94 double is 188, right? That means that means one unit, one unit is 1.2 lakhs, right? The, sorry, the double is uh, point, uh, double is uh, 188. So what is, uh, it is 18.8, right? What is one unit? 0. 0.2 lakhs. So therefore 94 units is equal to rupees 18.8 lakhs. So one unit is equal to rupees 18.8 lakhs by 94. So you can cancel 94 double, so it, is, it will go 0. 0.2 times, right? 0. 0.2 times. So it becomes 0. 0.2 lakhs. So if one unit is 0. 0.2 lakhs, okay. So if one unit is 0. 0.2 lakhs, what is required? We have to calculate initial cost of a stone. So initial cost of a stone, right? Initial cost of a stone is how much? It is 144 units. So 144 units and one unit is, unit is 0. 0.2 lakhs. So 144 into 0. 0.2 lakhs, right? So it will be how much? 28.8 lakhs. This is the answer for this question, right? A simple concept. Weight was initially in the ratio of 3 is to 4 is to 5 when broken. Okay. So if we combine those broken parts, it will again become a stone of weight 12 units. 3 plus 4 plus 5, it will become a stone of weight 12 units, right? 12 units. So if the weight of a stone is 12 units, its um, cost is given as cost is pro directly proportional to square of its weight. So in ratio, cost becomes 12 square, that is 144 units. Okay. Now, if all the parts are sold individually, so I know that all the broken parts can be sold individually, but again, this, for this for this stone, 
वेट इज कॉस्ट इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू स्क्वायर ऑफ इट्स वेट कॉस्ट इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू स्क्वायर ऑफ इट्स वेट सो फॉर इफ ब्रोकन पार्ट्स आर सोल्ड इंडिविजुअली सो लाइक फॉर वन ब्रोकन पार्ट इज अ वेट थ्री हाउ मच इट विल कॉस्ट विल बी इट्स कॉस्ट विल बी हाउ मच नाइन थ्री स्क्वायर इज नाइन बिकॉज कॉस्ट इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू स्क्वायर ऑफ द वेट सो वेट इज थ्री सो कॉस्ट इज नाइन अगेन से फॉर सेकेंड पार्ट इफ वेट इज फोर वट इज द कॉस्ट सिक्सटीन फोर स्क्वायर इफ वेट इज फाइव वट इज द कॉस्ट ट्वेंटी फाइव सो कंबाइंड कॉस्ट बिकम्स नाउ फिफ्टी यूनिट्स सो इफ स्टोन वॉज सोल्ड अर्लियर कंप्लीटली विद अनब्रोकन इट्स कॉस्ट इज वन फोर्टी फोर यूनिट्स एंड ऑल द थ्री ब्रोकन पार्ट आर नाउ सोल्ड राइट सो इट बी कॉस्ट बिकम्स फिफ्टी यूनिट्स सो there is a decrease of 94 units in the cost okay and that decrease is given by 18.8 lakhs in the question that means for one unit is 0.2 lakhs so what is the initial cost of a stone 144 units so 144 into 0.2 that is 28.8 lakhs that's the answer for this question okay so it's a very nice question okay very nice question move to next question now the ratio of boys to girls in three classes a b and c Are in the ratio two is to three is five is to six and eight is to five. Okay, the ratios of boys to girls when classes A and B are taken together is seven is to nine, and when B and C are taken together is three is to two. Okay, fine. C. So A boys and girls ratio. So in A boys is to girls ratio. In class A, it is uh two is to three. So assume it to be two x and three x in class B. It is seven is to nine. Okay, it is seven is to nine. So sorry, the so five is to six. So assume to be five y and five y and six uh, y. And in class C, it is how much? Eight is to five. So assume it to be eight z and five z. Now the ratio of boys to girls when uh, classes A and B are taken together. It's seven is to nine, correct? So see, in this kind of question, first you should check that these are these numbers not a direct multiplying factor or not. What I mean to say is, like here, the ratio is two for boys, and in B for boys is seven. Okay, so for B it is two plus five boys is seven, and for girls it is three plus six nine. If you simple add the ratio, so that that is seven is to nine satisfying, right? That directly means that that directly means that x is equal to y, right? Directly, right? What I mean to say is that if this ratio that two here two plus five is seven, number of boys is seven, and girls for girls three plus six is nine, directly satisfying. So no need of right when a and b took this is this is not given in question. No, it's given that when a and b is taken together, it is seven is to nine. So it is okay. Two plus five is seven. Three plus six is nine. Fine. So we don't need to make anything. That means x is equal to y, right? Or even if you take it right, it won't make any issue because what we will do now. So even if you take it right, it won't uh, it won't add anything, right? See, even if you take it, it won't add anything. So let's see here. Number of what is the number of boys in class A and B? Two x plus five y is the number of boys. Okay. Now what is the number of girls in uh, uh, this uh, class A and B taken together? Is three x plus six y. And what is their ratio? Their ratio is what? Their ratio is the ratio becomes seven is to nine. So you see here, once you solve it, what you will get? Eighteen x plus forty five y is equal to twenty one x plus forty two y. So you can see here, right? It becomes three x is equal to three y. Therefore, x is equal to y. This is what I wrote here, right? That x is equal to y. So no need of doing this much. No need of doing this much, right? No need. Because directly my ratios are satisfying the numbers. The ratio required is seven to nine. I got it. Two plus five seven. Three plus six is nine. Seven to nine. Right. So that means x is equal to y. No issue here. Okay. Now, when b and c are taken together, is three to two. Now check for b b and c now. So for b and c, it is b for b it is five. Number of boys is five, and number of boys in c is eight. So five plus eight thirteen. And for girls, it is six plus five eleven. Thirteen is to eleven. But what I require is three to two. That means this I can't get directly. This I can't get directly. So I have to solve for it now. So let's solve it now. So you can solve it for same way. Number of boys to number of girls in B and C. What is number of boys? Five y plus eight z. What is number of girls? Six y plus five z. Is equal to how much? It is equal to three by two. Okay. So if you solve it here, 
you will get 10y plus 16z 10y plus 16z is equal to 18y plus 15z okay therefore you get sorry z therefore you get z is equal to 8y z is equal to 8y that means now all can be converted to y only right all are now converted to y right that basically means all are now converted to y that means what is for a for a it is 2y and 3y simply because x is equal to y for b it is how much 5y and 6y number of boys and girls ratio, number of boys and girls for c it is since z is equal to 8y so c it is 8 into 8y it is 64y and 5 into 8y is 40y okay so what is the total number of students so total number of number of students is how much boys how much 2y plus 5y plus 64y okay so against the directly idea because I know total number of students I need not individual number of boys and girls I need now total number of students okay so it is here it is 5y here it is 11y and here it is 104y right 104y so it becomes how much total becomes 120y so total number is 120y right and it should be like that means the total number of students total number of students is of 120y that means it should be that number should be any multiple of any multiple of 120 so question was what could be the total number of students in in the three classes for the following options right so i know what is the answer answer is any multiple of 120 so 320 is not 340 is not a multiple of 120 360 is a multiple 480 is also a multiple of 120 400 is not a multiple so what is the answer answer could be both b or b or c so answer is e so e is the right option for this question right so again a nice question right a good a good question it is a bit of uh, solving is required okay but this concept was very important right because it could be like i told you as 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 I, as, I, as, as we have done it directly can get the exam numbers like this so this concept is very important right that i can directly write 2 plus 5 5 is 7 and 3 plus 6 is 9 right directly 7 is to 9 which is ratio satisfying right so here also if numbers are something like this that it also satisfies for b and c also right like for b and c also it is let's say 5 8 13 and 6 plus 5 is 11 so if that was the case right so if 13 11 was there the question becomes very easy we don't need to solve this much right directly we could add it directly we could add it because all the ratios are satisfying the required ratio but since here 5 plus 8 is 13 and 6 plus 5 is 11 not required not satisfied for b and c as it is 3 to 2 and here it is coming what 13 to 11 boys to girls ratio it is not satisfying so i need to solve like this right solve like this so okay okay now move to next question now see alloy a contains 40 percent gold and 60 percent silver so see i'll put in ratio here gold is to silver ratio in alloy a 40% gold, 60% silver. So, what is the ratio? 2 is to 3. 40 is to 60, 2 is to 3. Alloy B contains 35% gold, 40% silver and 25% copper also. So, copper is also here. So, in here, copper is not. So I can write 0 here. In ratio, you should not write 0. Just understand the meaning it is not nothing here. Right? It is nothing here. Right? It is nothing here. No copper is here. Okay? No copper is here. And in this 35 is to 40 is to 25. What is the ratio? 5, 7, ja, 5, 8, ja, 5, 5. Ja. So ratio is 7 is to 8 is to 5. Okay. Now, now, what is the ratio of gold and silver in the newly formed alloy? Okay. If alloys A and B are mixed in the ratio 1 is to 4. So there, there is, therefore, it is one part of this, this ratio and four part of b right four part of b so again we should without first uh, after, before solving we should check are the numbers already satisfying if satisfying we don't, don't need to do anything otherwise we'll make some adjustment like multiplying and making same and all right so we can see here 2 is to 3 is to x so here it is five parts of alloy and here it is 7 plus 8 plus 5 20 parts of alloy so already it is in the ratio of 1 is to 4 right so as per question, it is already in the ratio of 1 is to 4. So don't need to make any adjustment. Simply, what is the ratio of gold and silver in the newly formed alloy? So if they are mixed, they are mixed, it becomes A plus B. So what is the ratio of normal? I simply add it because it is already one part, it is already already four parts. So we don't need to add do anything now. Okay. It's simple is 
and copper is 5 but we have been asked ratio of only gold and silver so what is the answer answer is 9 is to 11 that's it that's the answer right that means already it was right it basically means that i was required a and b in the ratio of 1 is to 4 so already if i if i see if i assume it to be 5 kg and i assume it to be 20 kg right because why 5 because 2 plus 3 is 5 and 7 plus 8 plus 5 is 20 so if I assume it to be 5 kg and 20 kg, what is the ratio? Ratio is 1 is to 4. Okay. So the ratio is 1 is to 4. So already satisfying. That means out of 5 kg, 2 kg is gold, 3 kg is silver. Out of 20 kg in B, 7 kg is gold, 8 kg is silver and 5 kg is copper. You can simply now add because already in the ratio 1 is to 4 is there. Simply add it. So what is the gold now? 9 kg gold. What is silver? 11 kg gold. What is the copper? 5 kg copper. Okay. Silver is 11 kg silver, gold is 9 kg gold. We, we, we were required the ratio of gold and silver. What is the answer? Answer is 9 is to 11. Right. So again, a good concept, right? It is a good concept. Okay. Now let's move to next question here.